Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Or did I? Just kidding. I know your name is Bill. Contrary to popular belief, your friends do not actually call you Billy. You are 24 and 195 pounds. You work at your local Wendy's in Wisconsin, and your IP address is currently on screen. But that's just a silly question. Of course I can't actually see you. This video is pre-recorded. Or is it? On the topic of maybe or maybe not being able to see Bill watch my videos, how do blind people gain? You see, I relate to this question because I'm also blind without my eyes. There's also an entire market of people who won't be able to buy my games. If I ever actually make a decent game and publish it. I imagine I'm not the first person ever to make a game for blind people. But I also imagine they all suck and revolve around pressing a button in time with a song. Woo! Allow me to introduce the idea I have to make a game playable without your eyes. Sound! Trust me, this won't be a low-quality rhythm game. The idea is simple. Turn a 2D image into sound. And then you can just train yourself to interpret the audio as an image. So basically, every single pixel on screen gets turned into a sine wave. The higher up the pixels, the higher the pitch they have. And the lower down the pixels are, the lower pitch they have. Now, how do you tell left from right on this virtual auditory screen? Very simple. You have two ears that tell you left from right. Unless you only have one ear. Or are deaf. Well, that's a different video, so come back next year when I explore the wonderful world of how to make a rhythm game for deaf people. Now, before I go off and make a game that is only playable if you're blind, I need to first make sure my idea works. Thus, I've decided to reimagine a classical piece of artwork in the form of sine waves. Behold my inspiration! Mi amore, la Mona Lisa! Testo che suale che non ha nulla che fare con il progetto. Let's plug this historical masterpiece into my code. Yeah, so if that was disappointing to you, it kind of was for me as well. But I do have a working prototype now. Unfortunately, for gaming purposes, this program is... just too slow. It took a whole 30 minutes to generate one frame, and it's not even 1080p! For the future, I'm going to need a faster way of doing this. Now, what classic eyeballs required game do I plan on making accessible to all the eyeball lacking people out there? Pong! Trust me, this will all make sense once I explain how to optimize my code. You see, the first problem with my code is that it runs on every single pixel. If I make a game where the majority of the pixels on screen are black, the amount of pixels that actually needs to be calculated for is significantly less. Pong just so happens to have a lot of black pixels on screen. I'll run a script on every object to generate its own sound. Finally, I'm done coding. It's time to play my masterpiece. Now you might be wondering, why can you see the game if the whole point was to play this game blindfolded? My response to that is, would you like to watch the whole video like this? ARE YOU NOT ENTERTAINED?! I made Pong, but it's made for people who are blind. And today we're gonna beat it. This is what the game sounds like. It almost sounds like I'm trying to hypnotize you. You will subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is now the first attempt. Here we go. Is it there? I missed. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's moving over to the right. Oh, it's moving left. Did I hit it? It's moving back over to the right. I think I hit it. Oh, wait. It's on the right side again, I hit it twice? Am I gaming?
Am I am I gaming? I Yo Once again, I'm giving you a sentimental speech about how you guys have gotten me an important milestone on YouTube. At this point, I feel like every video I hit another milestone. And while I was working on this video, we not only hit 1,000 subscribers, but you guys were crazy enough to get to 4,000. Which means... I BEAT Zinth IN THE SUBSCRIBER RACE! Since I won the subscriber race, I get to choose Zint's 3D model for the next month of streaming. Will it be something tacky? Something embarrassing? Maybe I can make it horrendously ugly! So, just in case you were living under a rock for the past month, Z, uh, you lost! Congratulations! So I get to set your VTuber model for the next month! So, I've put my hands to the grindstone. Blood, sweat, and masculine unlabeled salt water I've poured into a 3D model worthy of a king. I dare say, after this excursion, I am the greatest VTuber modeler to ever roam this planet! And with that said, I am so good that not only did I curate one masterpiece, but I have created two models for you today! I mean, mostly because I couldn't decide which one was worse, but, uh, mm -hmm. pick your poison. Up first. I like to call this one Shrek in a maid outfit, for no particular reason whatsoever. <laughs> oh no. But that's not all. I've asked a couple of people and this one could be considered, uh, arguably worse, uh... Oh no. Is this- is it Shrek 2.0? It's, uh, what I would consider... peak brilliance in 3D modeling. <laughs> what is this picture? <laughs> oh. Oh! Oh, wait! Hold up! Don't you just hate it? <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, absolutely! It's- it's just- the, uh, Ugh! The bee hats! It hurts! Uh, well, since you hate it so much, I guess you're going with the Sh Shrek 2.0 then. Although this game may have looked like a success, I'd say, overall, it's not worth implementing into your games. You lose a lot of data when you convert an image to sound. Although it may have looked like I was actually playing Pong, in reality, I was just matching the pitch of the ball to the pitch of my paddle. Now you might be wondering, why did I decide to make this? And to answer that... Who else is making Pong content on the internet? I have a monopoly now! All the viewers I can farm now that there's no competition! I am the emperor of my own world! Wait, wait, what are you doing? No, don't! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.